Hey guys, Red X Rain here with another episode of Let's Play Gex, Enter the Gecko for the original PlayStation. I won't do this every time, but I just want to kind of show this off. So I'm going to the load screen to load the, the game that I'm on. And I just like how it takes you on this kind of first person journey uh, kind of thing through the different themed worlds. Um, I just really like, I said this last time, I just really like the aesthetics of the haunted levels, the horror levels, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, you know, going to different things, going to the password screen takes you to, like, a different area. It's just a nice little touch that I just thought I'd show off just once. I won't do that every time. Um, but picking up from last time, uh, we're almost done with this first opening area, sort of the white area. Because different areas are kind of color-coded. Um, and so we're going to end here with the boss battle. Now, one thing that I'll say uh, about the boss battles in general in this game, aside from Rez, and we don't even really get all that much about Rez, the main antagonist, there's really not development of who these characters are. They're just kind of bosses just for the sake of being bosses. So, eh, what can you do? But the strategy here is to basically deflect these blue uh, balls of fire that uh, the three Tiki brothers will hurl at you. Um... Now, you kind of have to time it kind of weird. The the depth perception is kind of weird. All you need to do, basically, is hit the blue one and just tail swipe. Uh, but it's actually a little bit earlier than you think. Like, the fireballs don't come directly at you. Now, once you're on the last Tiki Brother, um, the last one will always rotate around the pot. So you got to follow him. Um, is that going to hit? No. Okay. Um, but otherwise, this is a very uh, pretty easy fight. You go as long as you're you know pretty good at jumping over the the flames that actually uh you know uh come up it's, it's really not that difficult of a fight the fireballs that they hurl at you can't hurt you it's so you really just have to worry about avoiding the fire that um goes along the the ground um should i update the save now nah, i'm just gonna go ahead and resume play all right so whenever we beat a boss this is pretty standard i suppose uh whenever we beat a boss it's going to um unlock sort of the next gate into the next area. So we're done with the introductory area, the white area, whatever you want to call it. So uh, we're going to head into this kind of, uh, it's kind of a hub area. So we'll see, there's like a green gate, uh, there's a red gate over there, you can see the lights and that sort of thing. And we have, of course, more uh, more levels to pick one. There's the blue gate. Um, Mega Res will stop you. There's Res. Um, and that's a fight we'll get into much later. So let's go ahead and, and go into uh, Circuit Central here with www.com.com. Uh, and as you can see, this level only has two red remotes to get. Some levels only have two, and very few levels actually only have one red remote to find. This looks like an all-nighter at Richard Simmons' house. Not really sure how Richard Simmons is relevant to computer technology, but okay. Um, so a nice little, uh, a cool little thing, and, and we'll see this mechanic in other levels, and uh, they just sort of change how it happens, um, depending on the theme. But uh, basically, uh, so in these computer-themed levels, um, there are these little, like, green receptor things that allow you to kind of interact with the environment in different ways. There's like the springboards, which we used a little bit earlier, um, and you'll see there's also like these bridges that get crossed, some platforms get activated that way. Uh, so it's it, it sets the world, uh, sets the sort of theme apart. This part isn't all that tricky. Um, one nice thing is that if you do fall, it's not instant death or anything like that. It just sends you back to... Oh! <laughs> Uh, I totally did that on purpose, right? Just to show you how it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go with that. Um, oh shoot, man. Um, but yeah, it just sort of sent it just sends you back to the beginning, so you don't lose any health, you don't lose a life, so that's kind of nice. Um, and you kind of have to. I mean, you can see the platforms even when these like electric discs aren't on them. Um, but uh, taking your time and seeing where the discs hmm. go. Are you serious? <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, lets you see where the platform is a little bit easier. Um, one, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. One tricky thing here, uh, in this area is that you can't rotate the camera at all. I don't think rotating the camera would necessarily make it any easier anyway. Um, but, but you can't. But that is one 
aspect of this game that, and, and it's, it's, I think that's a quality that sometimes plagues um, 3D platformers of this era, um, kind of across the board, is the camera can be very unstable. And that's certainly true. So, certain levels, it's so, the levels can be so open that you can, you know, do a 360 spin, you can, um, go into first person by pressing triangle in this game, and that works out just fine. But that's uh, not always the case, especially in a level like this, which is, if you can't quite tell, <laughs> it's very vertical oriented. You know, we're climbing vertically here, so there's not a lot that you can do to rotate the camera. So you can do it a little bit, but in certain jumps, and maybe this room isn't the best example, but we'll definitely see when we go for the next red remote, it really you really have to uh, either do special kind of tricks with the camera or just kind of concede to the fact that, well, you're going to have to take a leap of faith. Perfect timing there for <laughs> the idea of a leap of faith. I almost didn't make it. Um, so, uh, as you may notice, I'm not going for the... Oh, no! Shoot. Only this I got an extra life out of it. So I'm not really going out of my way to, to do the collectibles this time around. Um, uh, going for this red remote, you really can't get the reward remote unless you do a lot of backtracking. Um, speaking of remotes, there's the not-so-hidden hidden remote for this level. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think going for this objective, the climbing the tower objective, it's, it's just not... It's not good <laughs> for trying to get the reward remote and I just realized that I think I actually have to fall back down because that little uh, that little green um, I don't know what's called it's like a little green receptor thing that uh, allows me to activate the these uh, jumping pads oh yeah okay there it is um, but overall this this isn't too difficult of an objective to complete um, Although, uh, I do think, uh, this is definitely where the game starts to get a little bit harder. And I think here's, yep, there's our remote. Let's avoid this guy entirely, we don't really need him. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so, uh, so we're gonna go back in, um, in just a second. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, so yeah, th th this is, this is a pretty difficult level, but I still think it's only... The only reason it's difficult uh, is because, nope, I don't need to see the password, uh, is because of, like I said, the, the camera angles. Um, so now we're going to do cross the data bridges. And um, this level, the, the, the reward remote is pretty difficult to get in this level. There's not that... that uh, <laughs> uh, there's not that many enemies. Um, it's a pretty small level, actually. Uh, so you, it, this is one of those levels where you kind of, you can't pass up any of the collectibles if you want to get the reward remote. Earlier levels we saw, like, even though I was, uh, you know, I, I would usually be very thorough at the start, and then, but you know, there is like a, almost a, a surplus of collectibles. You know, you could miss, you didn't have to attack every enemy to to, to get to all of them. Um, not so much the case in this level. Uh, case in point, we want to ransack everything we can out of this first room. Um, so there's little wall clingies here. Um, we'll see, we'll get a slight introduction into uh, those uh, data bridges, I guess is what they're called. Um, something else, I don't think I mentioned this last time. Um, I know I mentioned the, the, the green fly TVs are your health, right? And so you break the TV and then the fly goes around, you press circle and Gex will eat the fly and refill his health. Well, if you want, and in, you know, certainly in later levels this comes in, really comes in handy. Um, if you just break the TV, you can let the fly fly around Gex's head, and uh, it just sort of serves as an extra health. So even here in the first room, we got the first 30 collectibles, which is good. Um, but yeah, so now it's kind of like, you know, Gex kind of has five health. So that fly won't go anywhere until uh, until he gets hit, so 
um, you know, you can strategize. <laughs> you can you can strategize uh, how and when you use those flies. And I didn't even realize I could fall down that gap. That's pretty amazing. Let me actually go back really quick, and I I just I really want to make sure I didn't miss any collectibles. I I feel like I did. I feel like there was an area. Yeah, going across those bridges that I did not get. So let me just double check that really quick. Because like I said, this is a level where you really can't afford, if you want to get the reward remote, you don't want to uh, miss out on those. So what is over here? Uh, no? Okay. Um, but more of these more of these appeared, which is kind of a strange kind of cheatsy thing that, that happens on a semi random basis so if if you remember um when i first started the level one of the first things i did was go on that sticky wall and we got what does the first collectible look like here in this I level i don't know how I'm, <laughs> how I'm blanking but now we're on these like little diode things right so sometimes once you move on to the next set of collectibles the level will reload those collectibles. So you can go back to areas, technically, where you've already gotten uh, collectibles, and uh, they'll just kind of reappear. And the same thing um, can be said for enemies. So if you kill an enemy and get collectible one from them, if you exit the room and come back, sometimes they respawn, and then they'll drop more of the second collectible. Um, so that's a way that... Uh, Oh my gosh, major slowdown there. I don't know what was going on. Um, uh, that, yeah, if you ever end up short on um, collectibles, you can do that. But we're doing okay. We're, 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 we're doing okay. And so, uh, so, yeah, you have to come this way anyway, because this is how you get to the... Um, the red remote that we want and this path is a little bit more tricky there's a lot more gaps uh, it's the same principle of you know just kind of follow the electric bouncing ball <laughs> so to speak um, oh my gosh am I gonna make it across with no mess ups wow I made it across with no mess ups you are my that's a big friend. deal for me okay that's a huge deal for me another kind of cheatsy thing that you can do um, and it is extremely cheatsy, is if you really can't find any more collectibles, uh, oh, and here's a checkpoint, that's good. Um, if you really can't find any more collectibles, you feel like you've looked everywhere, you've attacked every enemy, you can actually, uh, like, uh, deliberately kill yourself in a level, and then you're guaranteed that all the enemies will respawn and they will, again, uh, drop any collectibles they have, so you can just kind of do that. Um, that's super cheatsy. Now this room is uh, particularly difficult, and I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of editing here. Uh, but let's—I mean, and I'm sure I'm gonna fall down this pit anyway. But just on the off chance that I don't suck at this game, which I do, I suck at all games. <laughs> um, why I play them and make videos about them, I don't know. Um, oh, this isn't the room I was thinking. Maybe it's the next room. Okay, this, r this room isn't so bad, so it's good that I went down into that pit and got things, but, you know, this is a little bit of a race against time. Yeah, uh, so, okay. Doing okay, so we're on to the third and final um, collectible here. Let's not miss that. But there's a room coming up with, like, a spinning platform, and maybe it's this one. More enemies. Um... Okay, let's see if this is the room. This is the room, definitely. So, in a second, we're gonna have to jump on that rotating platform. That was deliberate, by the way. I just wanna deliberately fall down here and collect things, although, like I said, I probably won't. I'm probably gonna fall down here about a million times anyway. And this is the room where the camera really gets, gets pretty funky and is kind of, uh, uh, Gex's major enemy in this level. So first, let's try and get on the platform. Of the Wiz. I like the Wiz. I don't know what the computer setup has to do with the Wiz. I heard they're remaking it, too. Okay. Third time's a charm. 
and you can already hear that that little like cuckoo sound means that you can't rotate the camera and maybe you kind of saw it jittering okay let's try this one more time jesus Come on. up up um one good thing is at least you don't have to have this uh power up or whatever uh activated to like you know use this here we go okay so now the real tricky part so uh basically you have to tail swipe here to make this spinning platform break off and it has its own inertia so it kind of continues to travel in the direction that it was before it was released um and so ideally what we're trying to do is we're trying to go straight across and that is kind of easier said than done for me anyway and also then add it if you want to get all of the collectibles as you can see there's four floating there you kind of have to deliberately send yourself that way too so let's try this again come on all right and okay well i got one <laughs> uh yeah this is this is a really annoying part of this this level uh almost straight maybe i could have made that jump i doubt it um and then of course there's that area over to the right there with like that reflective mirror surface if you go over there it pushes you off so i mean there is very little margin for error oh here we go i'm gonna get pushed off oh yeah okay here we go i think i got it this time sweet okay <laughs> and right into an enemy yeah so that's gonna be a lot of editing uh, and I think I lost a collectible on the wall. Ooh, I feel like I'm... I hate to say it, but I'm... Okay, so... Hmm. Well, this is the final room, and we're at 33 collectibles. There's some here. I might have to do some backtracking. Die. Ooh. Ooh, we're missing it by... 11. But I feel like there's some coming across these bridges. So uh, we need to pick up that power uh, so we can activate this. And then just like we've seen before, uh, these activate. Um, here again is another great example of the camera being terrible in this area. As you can see, it's like really stuck. <laughs> it's really stuck right behind Gex. Oh my god, ridiculous. And uh, I didn't make it fast enough. So... Let's go ahead and go back. I swear, this is way too close. You, you'd think that I'm, like, deliberately trying to get the camera that close. I am not. That is all the game's own doing. Um. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. All this technology so bad guys can hear Rush Limbaugh. You used that one already, Gex. <laughs> Um, I don't think there's any more collectibles in this room, which is not good because we're so close. Because the... Hold on, let me get into first person here for a second. Yeah, the red remote is right there. So I'm going to actually have to backtrack really quick. Um, and I'll meet you guys back here in this room. I'll probably show getting the hidden re the reward remote. Pearl of the Orient. Come on. Oh, God, one more. i got to get one of these ones in the air. It. Or is there more over here? Let's try this one. Forget about it. All right. Now I'll meet you back in that room with the red remote. Okay. So I've got my power up. We got the reward remote, which was which sucked. <laughs> I probably could have just, I guess, killed myself, done my own cheats and trick, killed myself, and uh, started back at the checkpoint. And see, now that enemy respawned, so I probably could have gotten a few from him. But... So it's a little late for a uh, little late for could'ves, right? And I can't believe I almost missed that. And there we go. It's tail time. Actually, I'm thinking how glad I am to be done with that level. <laughs> the red remote's not so hard. The hidden remote, not hard at all. That reward, man, and, and... tricky stuff. So thankfully that that level is only should I update my save? Yeah, I will. Uh, just in case something happens, because I do not want to do that level again. And we don't have time to go into a whole nother level, but I think we do have time to do this bonus stage. 
And bonus stages, if I hadn't mentioned it already, are unlocked by collecting silver remotes. They only appear when you collect a certain number of silver remotes. That's the point of getting of, of getting the silver remotes. I know what you're thinking. It's tail time. All right, and so just like the other bonus round, and they, they all follow this. I am most certainly not in the vicinity of Kansas anymore. <laughs> Uh, is it's timed and you just have to get all the collectibles now this level can be really frustrating and tricky um, it's kind of a uh, it's a puzzle I suppose certain doors will take you up a floor certain doors will take you down a floor that kind of thing um, so it's uh, it, it's a, it can be a little bit of trial and error um, or of course you can make yourself a map um, Or, you know, look up a guide, I suppose, on the internet. Uh, but usually it's it's not... Three more it's, and I have the whole set. <laughs> actually, 24 more and you have the whole set. Uh, and, uh, here we go. Uh, and, of course, ideally you want to move floor by floor whenever you can. You can fall to different floors like that, which, again, I totally meant to do. <laughs> Uh, see, now now I'm getting mixed up with my doors. Usually, it's... Usually the door that you want is the complete opposite side of where you came in. Usually. And uh, these chandeliers uh, aren't too bad. They only drop you one floor. Um, so it's actually better to... If you think you're not going to make... Uh, let's just skip that. There's certain rooms that have extra lives, but... I don't want to waste any time here. If you think you're not going to make a jump, just stay on the chandelier so that you only fall one floor, because it'll stop at one. Um, another extra life. Because um, dropping one floor is better than dropping, you know, several floors. I think I have to get over to that one all the way to the right. This is kind of a tricky jump. Oh, there you go. You can double back on that one. That's a little bit of a trick. And, uh, <laughs> the only way I think that you can access that floor is you have to drop down from above. But you ideally... Oh, come on. Ideally, you do want to end right here on the top, uh, because then we have to go collect the golden remote, and the golden remote appears right next to us. Well, not next to us, but in the door next to us. Right over here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Is that Hellra- It kind of looks like Hellraiser. Or, uh, his name's not Don't Hellraiser. Take Pinhead. From Joe and it looks like, uh, Lizzie Borden with her axe, maybe? Okay, um, so this level is getting- This level, this video is getting quite long, so let's go ahead and, uh, end it here. I'm gonna update my save and that sort of thing. Uh, but other than that, uh... Yeah, we should save future levels for a future episode. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and when we come back next time, uh, we'll uh, resume play back in this hub area, and we'll either check out the other horror-themed level, which is probably what I'll do, or we can go to Kung Fu Theater, but I think we'll probably do this Scream TV level. Um, so, uh, so yeah, again, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Bye.